So let's tackle the Whitney Late Pick 5 on Whitney Day at Saratoga on Saturday. It comprises races 7 through 11, and there is a mandatory payout here, which is always nice. We'll take a look at the first race, uh, leg 1. It is the 7th. It's the Saratoga Derby Invitational. It's a grade 1 run at a mile and 3 sixteenths on the outer turf or the melon turf course for 3-year-olds only. And this is a field where you've seen a lot of these kind of knocking heads uh, multiple times. Uh, Cugino, Legend of Time, White Palomino, and Royal Majesty in particular. Uh, they have been uh, three straight races, been going at it head to head. And uh, it's been a question of who gets the trip, seemingly, uh, with all of them. And to be honest, uh, what I'm looking for in this race, particularly since they're three year olds, is progression and horses who look like they're ready to take a move forward and from this list i mean the only one i've clearly crossed out is izzy doro i just think he's cheap speed and i don't expect him to matter but uh cugino i'm not or cugino i'm not really keen on because this horse has found a tendency to hang and uh did win his last race on the front end, but that's not always indicative of a horse who uh, is improving or moving forward. I think he caught a fairly soft field, and um, back running against some of the better ones, I, I'm not sure that uh, he stacks up to the point where I'd like him at 3-1 to one in particular. Uh, Legend of Time is kind of the same thing. Now, it is Charlie Appleby and it's William Buick. That's true. And, you know, their track record speaks for itself, for sure. But take a look at his last three races. Has he really been that much better than the other three-year-olds? Yes, he's encountered some traffic, but uh, the race he did win, he got free. And I, th I don't think that was kind of a, a subpar field compared to this one. And he has the look to me of a horse who's not necessarily getting better. And I don't really like him at 7-2 to two for that reason. Now, White Palomino has got a lot of seconds, and he seems to be caught at the wire. That's true. But, you know, his last race, he, he was very game in the stretch, and he did re-rally and fought back hard. And the thing I noted, his class rating is getting better with each race, and more importantly, his late fraction, particularly for a front runner, is getting better. So I think this is a horse coming in third off the layoff who's poised for a big effort. And, of course, Chad Brown is having an excellent uh, meet so far at Saratoga. He's way ahead of everybody else in the standings. And note that Flavian Pratt stayed aboard, uh, and I think that speaks volumes. So uh, to me, White Palomino is certainly one uh, to consider. I think uh, he is going to encounter some early pace. That's why I don't have him on top. Uh, I think he, he may uh, not be able to settle terribly easy, but I do like his pattern, and I think he is moving forward. Diego Velasquez, the, for Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore, what more needs to be said about that combination? They're fantastic, whether it be abroad or here. This is a horse that, if you look at his PPs, this is a horse who relishes firm turf. All his good races have been on good to firm turf. His less impressive races have been on heavy or soft. So I think the move to firmer turf, and let's remember that even if it's uh, the turf has a little give in it here at, at Saratoga, it's firmer than it is abroad. So I think this is a good scenario. He won his last race on really firm turf for, uh, for Europe, and uh, he was very impressive drawing off. So Diego Velasquez, I think, is coming in this race in very good form, and he would certainly be my pick to win this race. Now, deterministic, uh, Christophe Clement is 33% second-time turf. And he's got Joel Rosario in the irons. And this one, in his last race, his first turf effort, I really liked his closing kick. He, he really put it all together once he got it going. And I think he's poised to improve. At 6-1, to one, I think you're getting a really good value here. And uh, I think if you're looking for an overlay, you're looking for a surprise candidate here, I think Deterministic fits the bill. So he's one I think you certainly have to use. Now, Royal Majesty, I, it's awful tough for me on a big stakes day to throw out a Bill Mott horse. 
Um, you know, I paid last week with the pick five with Lamorna, came out of nowhere, and uh, Bill Mott just had all his horses running big on uh, uh, on Jim Dandy Day. But if you look at Royal Majesty, uh, he is a horse who really isn't getting better. And he did have that one race where he had a lot of traffic trouble, and uh, you thought maybe he'd move forward from that. Really hasn't. Uh, last time he seemed over preoccupied with boxing in Legend of Time. And when it came down to it in the stretch, he really didn't run any better than he had in his last couple. Uh, he is by Frankel, and it's awful tough to overlook them, especially at 12 to 1. You know I love value. Uh, if you want to throw him in, I wouldn't talk you out of it. But again, I don't think he's necessarily moving forward. And you haven't seen a layoff or anything that. Uh, would give me the indication that he's ready to uh, to run another big effort. I think he's had his chances, and it just hasn't happened. Uh, so Royal Majesty, reluctantly, I, again, if you want to use him, I don't blame you, but I'm going to toss him. Carson's run is another one. I don't really think he's getting any better. Uh, the races, his class level uh, has not improved with any race. He, ran, he won his last race pretty effectively convincingly, pretty impressively with a late kick. That's certainly true. But uh, it wasn't as good a field as he's going to have today. And just looking at his races on the whole, he really hasn't gotten better from two years old. It doesn't appear to me. Uh, he is a late runner. I think there'll be some pace to run to. But if you consider that uh, it doesn't look like he's got one more run in him to improve, uh, then and, and the fact that Christophe Clement did not put Joel Rosario aboard, uh, and he is uh, certainly a closer's jockey, and he's, you know, Clement's best jockey, I think deterministic makes more sense to me in this race. So, uh, in sum, um, the three horses, I think, are poised for progression to move forward. White Palomino, Diego Velasquez, and deterministic, and I'm going to give... Uh, the edge to Diego Velasquez based upon class. Leg two is the eighth race. It's the test. A great one run at seven furlongs for three-year-old fillies. And this is always a great race. And we've got a terrific field here. You just look. Uh, Emery, Denim and Pearls, Bright Work, Ways and Means, and My Main Squeeze. I mean, that's a six-horse field that's just awful tight. And uh, there's a lot of ways potentially to go here. But what I'm coming down to here is horses for the course. And really, we've only got two who fit the bill definitively. And that would be ways and means and bright work. Uh, but just looking at the uh, field here, you don't see anybody who's committed to get to the lead. Uh, and I think that makes this a very interesting race. Now, you note for bright work that Johnny Velasquez is aboard. And, of course, we know what he can do on the front end. And I wouldn't be surprised if bright work coming off a long layoff hasn't run since two, uh, November, the two-year-old, uh, would go to the lead being fresh and uh, maybe a little keen uh, coming off such a long layoff. Uh, bright work, you know, was two for two at Saratoga, beat Ways and Means, uh, last year in the spin away and a little aided uh, ways and means did have some trouble in the back had to check a little bit uh, and, but did come on nicely but bright work was a, a very solid one turn filly and uh, proved that uh, one turn is basically what she wants to do the uh, the next couple of efforts around two turns uh, weren't the greatest but that's not a big surprise given her pedigree so Really, to me, what it's going to come down to is position. And I think bright work, you know, really the question is, has she progressed from two to three? I think uh, John Ortiz is having a nice meet, and he's showing a lot of confidence bringing her back uh, in a grade one stakes race, particularly one of this cali caliber. Uh, but if bright work comes back to the form that she had at two, uh, she's a fighter, and she's going to fight for every inch. And... Um, tactically is going to be in a better position uh, than perhaps ways and means will be. And so bright work, I think, makes a lot of sense here at six to one. 
Uh, there are some question marks for sure. But uh, again, if she makes that progression to three years old, she could be awful tough in this spot. Emery, you have to like because she has gotten progressively better with every single start. And the thing I like the best more than anything is her late fraction continues to get better with every start. So this is a horse, while running at the same fractions early on, it has more stamina late. Um, maybe a hair below ways and means uh, or bright work, but I still think this is a very solid horse. Uh, I would have liked to have seen Flavian Pratt aboard, but of course we know where he's going to be. Uh, so I think Emery is one. Maybe you use more underneath, but I think is a horse coming to this race in really good form. Uh, Denim and Pearls, I think, is a nice filly, but I just think she's a cut below. And her optimum uh, best race, I'm not sure, is good enough to win here. Um, there's just been a couple instances where she's uh, disappeared, hasn't uh, shown her full power. And more than anything else, what... Uh, I think is the disadvantage is she kind of runs the same way that Ways and Means and My Main Squeeze do. So um, yeah, I have to like either one of them a little better uh, in this spot, particularly the, the running style. And uh, so Denim and Pearls, I'm going to let go here. Uh, Ways and Me or uh, My Main Squeeze is a very interesting horse here. I think you could certainly put in the mix. Um, I, I think that uh, really more than anything else it, is the running style is, uh, again, comparable to some other runners in here. And so uh, I don't know if that maybe she would have an advantage that she would have in other races. So uh, my main squeeze, I certainly could see more of an underneath candidate to me. Uh, but obviously, I think the horse to beat here is Ways and Means. Now, that last race, uh, allowance race, was certainly a stellar effort, but she really didn't beat a whole lot. And the thing I'm a little concerned about more than anything is Ways and Means does not break well. It takes her a little while to get going. Uh, certainly when she gets going, she's a freight train. I mean, she, you know, she's got plenty of speed, and yeah, I, she certainly could overcome it in this field. But uh, given the fact you've got a lot of horses who like to run from off the pace there may be uh some traffic issues in this race so i don't think it's an absolute lock for ways and means um and the fact that bright work has gotten the better of her before um i don't know it it you know i think on talent alone ways and means certainly would be the horse to beat and i think you know i'm gonna pick her in here but i'm not sure about a single um i know it's awful tempting but, you know, the, the, just the fact that there's no confirmed horse to run to in here and the fact you've got a lot of horses who potentially could give ways and means some traffic, uh, potential problems there. Um, so it's not, a, it's not a completely a lock, but I, I think, you know, certainly uh, she's uh, demonstrated at three years old that, that she's, uh, she's good enough to win here without a doubt. Um, and I'll, I'll just bet that Chad Brown just having a great meet, Flavian Pratt, really hard to go against them. So she is definitely the pick to win it. But, you know, bright work is, bright work is awful tempting, uh, given, the, given her record with ways and means and tactically having a better position and breaking out of the gate, I think, better than ways and means. So uh, really it's going to come down to those two. Um, obviously less question marks with main, my main squeeze so we will or um, ways and means rather so we will take her uh, on top in the test link three is the ninth race it's the lore stakes it's ungraded at 135,000 running a mile and a 16th on the inner turf for four year olds and up and I gotta tell you this is a corker if there was ever a spread race this is it for me um the inner turf, I mean, the closers have been, uh, it's been favorable to the closers. Obviously, with the tighter turns, it's easier for them to get a setup. Uh, but, you know, if you look at our two closers here, confirmed, Irish Aces and More Than Looks, uh, Irish Aces just never seems to get there. Um, you know, 
more on. <laughs> I can't really say much more than that. His last two, he's had a couple of thirds. And um, he, just looking at him, he, he's one of those cavalry type of closers, you know, always there late, uh, like the cavalry was in Western movies of yore. Um, so, it, he, you know, I think he's got a favorable setup here with all this early speed, but um, I just wonder about that. And he just may be one of those that just never seems to get there. So he's kind of hard to trust for a win uh, bet in that regard. More than looks is coming off uh, a long layoff, hasn't run yet this year, and uh, did run in the uh, on the inner turf at Saratoga last year. And I did note that he was wide on both turns, um, and in the first turn in particular, he was trying to save ground and kind of got shut off and then got sent way out there. Um, and it didn't look like he was that comfortable uh, banking. So. That's something I look for in these inner turf races. Uh, coming around the bend, he was already out wide, so he was okay, and he did close pretty well. This is a good horse, and Cherie DeVoe is just lights out, and in particular with the Rod Ortiz in the irons, they're 75%, so uh, three three out of four. So more than looks certainly is a, uh, is a horse I think you absolutely have to use. I just wonder about coming off that long a layoff. I know Cherie DeVoe is good with the long layoffs, but that is uh, quite a long time. And uh, then, of course, you you have to wonder if uh, he's progressed as well So, uh, as a four-year-old. But we'll, we'll, I guess we'll just have to see. But certainly, he has the, uh, the back class to be effective here, and uh, I would certainly want to use him. Uh, you look at some of these others. Swift Sure, of course, is a, is a mystery. I uh, looked up his uh, pedigree. His dam has no get that basically... He had one that ran on turf, I think, one time. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just doesn't have a lot of turf pedigree. <coughs> Excuse me. Underneath. So a bit of a mystery. This horse certainly has speed. Uh, I did think it was interesting to see his one work over the turf. They did have the dogs out, uh, so maybe they're anticipating taking him off the pace. Uh, at 20 to 1 in this race, you know, certainly uh, is, is value, but, uh, you know, the fact that he tends to like to run on the front end and then all of a sudden changing stream and now coming off the pace, I don't know. But. If you want to use them, I certainly wouldn't blame you because to me, this is a really a tough, tough race to find uh, who has the edge over anyone else. Uh, Kubrick, case in point, uh, his last race, I really didn't, uh, I, I, I really didn't like a whole lot. Um, he, you know, he's probably, uh, you know, in Chad Brown's care, anything is possible, and Chad's just having such a great meet and. Uh, you know, I mean, you get Frankie Dettori as well, and at eight to one, yeah, I mean, you have to use him. But I, I just didn't really like the way he uh, uh, he finished the last race. I did note, though, it, it may have been one of those things they didn't think they had a chance, so they they didn't pursue it. Uh, so he may have a little more in the tank and may surprise uh, from that perspective. And there's not a couple other Chad Browns to compare him to, but. Uh, um, Kubrick won, you know, you can't leave him off. You have to use him. Now, Big Everest has a, a positive record uh, at Saratoga and on the inner turf. And, and in other inner turf courses like Aqueduct and whatnot. Uh, he's likely going to be the speed of the speed. And, um, you know, I mean, I think that he is uh, certainly, he certainly can win this race. It's just he's got all this other early speed. Uh, it may be tough for him to uh, to get away, but his form is decent, and um, I think you can you can certainly use him. Now, Smoking T uh, had won this race last year and uh, is coming off a layoff. They seem to be following pretty much the same pattern they did last year, so that's a good sign uh, for Shug McGahey. Uh, should be sitting just off the leaders, and again, if you do have issues with those closers. Uh, with Irish Aces doing what he normally does and then more than looks maybe not firing all the way or having trouble with the inner turf, Smoking Team may make a lot of sense at 6-1. to one. Um, So 
it, to me, it was really difficult to find a horse that has an edge. Um, I might lean towards Kubrick uh, just because he did have probably ran in the classiest of races last time and the field was uh, was pretty deep. Um, and so from that perspective, this is a little bit of a class relief, I'd say. Uh, and again, Chad Brown, um, I, I think this one may have a little bit more in the tank. But, it, you know, to me, it's a really wide open affair and awful tough to, to find one. So uh, the ones I threw out, I thought were, were fairly, um, fairly obvious. I mean, Pining Spirit uh, really hasn't been in the greatest of form this year. Uh, Johnny's Fireball, I always love to throw in the mix, but he looks to be off his feet as well. And uh, I don't think the inner turf is necessarily a course he's going to like, especially with all this other uh, early speed. And then Forever Super, I mean, he, this, he, this is a solid horse, uh, but solid is about as far as I'd go. I, I, I just, can he put together that premium effort to take this field down? I, I, don't, I just don't think so. Uh, if you want to put him underneath, I can certainly see it. But, again, really tough race to, uh, to find an edge, to find one. And uh, if you had to pin me down, I'll go with Kubrick uh, just because he's Chad Brown. Um, and I think maybe this one had a little, could have run a little bit better in the last one than he did. But uh, wide open race in the Laurel, uh, it's definitely one you want to spread. Link four is the tenth race. It's the Troy Stakes, a Grade Two, run at five and a half furlongs on the turf for four-year-olds and up. And this is the return of Cogburn after that spectacular Jaipur, where he <laughs> he ran five and a half furlongs in under a minute. Uh, just a spectacular, unreal effort. And the question is, of course, you know, can he? Does he have to run back to that to win this race? No. But is it logical that he bounces off that big an effort? Kind of. Uh, I looked at his form a lot, uh, very thoroughly, trying to see any hints of where he's bounced before uh, after running a big effort and uh, didn't really find them. And Steve Asperson is notorious for keeping horses running well uh, when uh, for extended periods of time. So that's encouraging if you're a Cogburn fan. Uh, however, uh, that, that was just such a big effort. You, you know, it's kind of like Didia uh, running back uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, just had to bet against her because she just ran such a big race. And it's just not logical that they come back and do it again and run, run a top effort again. So... <clears throat> I think it's logical in this case that you do try to find a way to beat Cogburn, and I I'm going to try. Um, I look at the, you know, first thing I want to look at is do we have early speed that could just, you know, uh, hop out of the gate and just uh, blow the field away? Not really. Dancing Buck is really the only confirmed front runner, and I didn't think ran a bad race in the Jiper. It was just apparent to me that um, he just wasn't good enough. He, was, he wasn't he uh, was a grade one type of horse. Now, this is a grade two, but you've got a lot of grade one veterans here. So, <coughs> to me, uh, Dancing Buck doesn't make a, a lot of sense here. Um, looking at some of the more prominent ones, uh, Mischief Magic certainly being like, you know, trained by Charlie Appleby with William Buick. Uh, would, would you know, seem like a reasonable alternative. The problem is, uh, watching the last three races for Mr. Magic, he is lagging further and further back every race, and he's really uh, breaking as slowly as he is. He's really compromising any chance he has to win. Now, he's going to come with that big kick, but the problem is he's running a little slower uh, each time, each race early on. And so he runs that same kick, but uh, it's all for naught because he's gave himself too much to do. So uh, <clears throat> the fact that he's done it for three starts in a row uh, makes it, to me, uh, makes a really tough horse to uh, to want to favor in this race because uh, the other part of it is I don't know how much early speed there is. 
to, to run to. So I'm going to throw out Mischief Magic. Uh, Big Invasion, another one that would would certainly make uh, seemingly make sense, but Big Invasion is just really hard to trust. This horse just can't find his way to a good trip. And, you know, uh, I took note of his last race following up from the Jaipur, and uh, he ran in a, a lower class level. I believe it was an optional claimer, and uh, he got nipped at the wire. And so that's a race that he's supposed to win. Uh, so to me, big invasion. I've just never really been a big fan of his. And could he win this race? Sure. And you, you get a decent price at twelve to one. But uh, horses who find trouble tend to always find it. And I'm betting he's going to find it again. Particularly when you consider you've got all those late runners in this race. So uh, I'll pass on big invasion. Uh, the ones I settled on, uh, so Sua Summer is one I kind of went back and forth with. Uh, I don't think this horse could should quite be 30 to 1. He's trained by Bill Mott on a big stakes day. And uh, if you took note of his tab, he's been running very well, working very well, uh, following what was a uh, not a very good effort in the, in the Jaipur. I mean, he was up near the pace early and then just sort of faded, didn't have much of an answer late. Um uh, could he run a better race? Sure. I mean, he's three for four at Saratoga, um, and it, it's really hard to leave him off. Uh, certainly, if you want to look for a bomb, he would be a pretty good candidate here. It's just his form overall lately has been really subpar, and it's just hard to, to like him. But his tab is encouraging, and if you want to throw him on your ticket as a horse to beat Cogburn, uh, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to give it a shot. But the two that I like uh, to do the job, I like Groom's All Business. Groom's All Business. Um, I really like what I've seen for his last couple of starts. Uh, this horse certainly can put up comparable speed numbers to take this one down. And he just looks in really good form. Um, and uh, I think he has the right running style being up near the pace. That's usually where these races are run. Um, and at 8-1, to one, I think you're getting some nice value. Uh, so Groom's All Business, to me, uh, makes a lot of sense uh, in this race. Outlaw Kid would be another one I'd think about at 15-1, to 1, uh, mainly because Flavian Pratt is aboard uh, more than anything else. Uh, this one has uh, beat Big Invasion last time and uh, shows the kind of turn of foot that uh, I think that he could he could factor in this race. He may be tactically at a bit of a disadvantage he, he tends to write, uh, run about mid-pack but uh, he looks like a horse that you know I think if, if, if Cogburn doesn't have it I think it's going to be one of these kind of obscure or lesser known horses kind of comes from out of nowhere that you don't expect um, and to me uh, Groom's All Business and Outlaw Kid are the ones that uh look most favorable to me and again i think the more prominent horses uh they they're, they're reasons to go against them and so uh to me it's kind of either cogburn or uh one of these two lesser known ones and, and that's just the way i'm looking at it it's um it, it's an interesting race from that perspective uh the the problem you have is if you want to beat cogburn you know the jaipur has come back as a key race three other horses have come back to win their next start uh, so, um, it's, you know, it's really tough to, uh, to look past him. But running that big a number uh, in his last race, I just think maybe this is the time you want to try to beat him. And so I'm going to take a shot with Groom's All Business. And uh, uh, we're certainly going to use Cogburn. You have to. But uh, I think maybe this is the time you want to try to beat him. So we'll try with Groom's All Business and Outlaw Kid. The final leg of the Whitney Pick 5 is, of course, the Whitney. It's the 11th race, running a mile and an eighth for four-year-olds and up. And one thing that's very important to note about this race is with the configuration of the track, this race starts on a turn. And that is very important, uh, I think, when you think about the race shape here. Uh, certainly, being to the inside, if you're an early runner is a big advantage um, we're going to go through them one at a time 
And we'll start with our front runners uh, that are listed, uh, Arthur's Ride and Charge It. Uh, Arthur's Ride is obviously a now horse. He's running extremely well. This is a big test moving into a grade one. Uh, the 11 post is certainly uh, a problem uh, because he's going to be carried extremely wide out of the gate. And there are obviously others to the inside who will be breaking uh, quicker and will have an advantage. However, I'm not so sure that Arthur's Ride needs the lead. Uh, I think it's a product of just being the best horse uh, in the two, two of his last three where he was just better than the competition. So he did what a good horse should do. He just got to the lead and, and that was it. Uh, I wouldn't put it past Bill Mott at all to have this horse rate, especially when you consider the shape of the race. Uh, this horse certainly has a lot of talent and I would not be surprised uh, if you find him running from off the pace, uh, then the question is, is he a grade one horse? Well, we don't know that yet. And interestingly enough, Bill Mott is one for 10 at Saratoga in grade one stakes races at Roots. Uh, so it's, um, it's a little, uh, uh, you know, Bill Mott on a big stakes day, it's really hard to go against. Um, I think Arthur's ride is, has a puncher's chance and at eight to one, you're certainly getting some nice value. The, he's got a lot of things working against him. That post is going to be very difficult to overcome. But again, this horse does have a lot of talent, and I think he's worth a use, especially at eight to one. Charge it has everything against him in this race. This is a horse who absolutely has to have the lead to be effective. Uh, it's been proven. The Suburban Handicap last year, Johnny V put him on the lead. He got there, and it was all over. That's what this horse needs to do. He just doesn't do it otherwise. Um, you know, he, he just more, every time, uh, the Whitney last year was a great example. I thought if he had got to the lead in that race, he had a really good chance to win it. And he he didn't. Um, he's just a, he's a, an enigma. He's a very difficult horse, but uh, in this scenario, is just really working against him, so I'm going to pass on charging. National Treasure is the pick to win it. He has everything in his favor here. He's got an inside post. Um, any of the speed horses who, on paper, look like they might want to get up to the lead are well to his outside. So tactically, uh, with the exception of First Mission, who we'll talk about, but uh, National Treasure really has everything going for him here. The only question is, uh, you know, he hasn't run since the Met Mile, but Baffert is fine with long layoffs, and uh, I think that was a good primer for this. And this is just a, a horse who's, uh, he's just the best older horse right now. I've always liked him, and uh, I think he's going to win it here, uh, you know, because he, again, he has everything working in his favor. So I think he's a logical win candidate. Don't like 9-5, to five, but I think it's justified. First mission uh, is, it, the more I look at his past performances, to me, this is a grade three horse. Um, the best scenario he can have is when he's able to settle with moderate fractions and then have something left in the tank. The times that he's been asked to run a little bit on the front end is when he's run into trouble and he hasn't had anything in the tank. Uh, I think that Stephen Foster, he had every chance to win that race, and he didn't uh, because I think he wasn't able to settle. He was pressed. He had to be up near the lead, and if he tries to do that here, uh, I don't think he's going to be a bother at a national treasure, and uh, I just don't think he's... Uh, I just don't think this race sets up for him because I, I just, class-wise, I don't think he's a grade one horse. I think he's proven it, so I'm going to pass on first mission, especially at 9-2. to two. Il Miracolo is kind of the same ilk. I think he's more of a grade three horse. He certainly improved a lot from his three-year-old campaign. Being a gun runner, that isn't much of a surprise. Uh, but again, uh, I just don't think he'll have enough in the tank amongst this group uh, to be effective, and so I'm going to let him go as well. Tumba Rumba, how can you not like this horse? He brings it every single time. He tries hard. Uh, he isn't good enough here. He, I don't think he's a grade one horse either, but I'm, I'm putting him in the mix for underneath because at 20 to 1, a horse who tries as hard as he does, uh, I think you have to consider because he'll just keep running. He doesn't care who he's running against. So we'll put Tumba Rumba for underneath only. 
Skippy Longstocking is in the post, 10 post, which uh, is difficult for sure, but he did run a really nice race last time, and he's in very good form. Savvy Joseph uh, has confounded a lot of people by actually having a good meet outside of Gulfstream Park. Uh, I think this horse, since he breaks so sharply, is going to be able to gun it and uh, get up to where he needs to be. Uh, the top end is really the question mark for me, but I think he's good enough to get underneath given his current form. Disarm, uh, I, th I like Disarm in this spot. The Stephen Foster, he had some issues. He was wearing a bar shoe, and that is an immediate toss for me. I think heading into the race, he looked like he was ready to take a step forward. Yeah, the, the, the race prior to the Stephen Foster, I mean, you know, he took soft fractions, and it was kind of just a nothing race. But this horse demonstrated at three years old. He certainly has talent. And I expect him to run a big race here for Steve Asperson. Uh, I like Disarm as an alternative at 15 to 1 uh, to win this race. So he, to me, is a win candidate. Warrior Johnny is just coming off a monster effort. He got a 111 uh, Brisnet figure, I believe. And uh, that's just so much better than anything he has run before. Uh, Phil Bauer is always very dangerous at Saratoga, but not necessarily in graded stakes on the dirt. And uh, I think Warrior Johnny, to me, has to be a bounce candidate, so I'll pass. Uh, Bright Future, I think, leaves himself a little too much to do. Uh, it, it, in watching his races, uh, I think this horse has some talent. The Salvatore Mile was, uh, he looked completely out of it. And then once they pushed the button, uh, he displayed a really nice kick. Uh, but you're on a track that is speed favoring, and uh, I don't uh, I don't necessarily think the race shape sets up terribly well for him. But uh, I think he will run a good race, and I think he's a candidate for underneath in your exotics. But I don't see him as a win candidate here. Post time has never run this distance. Uh, he's been at one turn for the majority of his career. I think that speaks volumes about him. Brittany Russell is uh, not very good in shipping and graded stakes. And this horse certainly tries hard. You know, he's been in the money every single race he's run, 10 out of 11 exact as he's a trier. He'll, he'll run his race. I don't think it's good enough. And particularly being a late runner, uh, I think that uh, that dooms post time in this one. Krupe, uh is another one that when he breaks decently, he has a chance. When he doesn't, he has none. Uh, this is a horse who has improved from his three-year-old campaign, but he still has those gait issues. It's just when he, uh, whenever he breaks poorly, the race is over. Now, if he breaks okay in this race, then I think he has a shot to get underneath. But given his running style on the track that doesn't favor speed, uh, I think he's going to have it uh, have a lot uh, a lot to do and. I don't know how much tactical speed Krupe really has, and that's kind of a thing that makes me against him to win this race. But can he get underneath? Yeah, I think so. And at 15 to 1, he fattens up your try and your super as well as uh, the exact. And he could very well get underneath, but I don't see him as a win candidate. So in sum, a national treasure, this is his race to lose without question. Uh, but I think Disarm and Arthur's Ride uh, are offer the... Uh, the best alternatives and the best chances to take them down. But they are going to need a little bit of help. So if we take a look at our ticket, we're going to go with 4, 5, and 8 in the leg 1, 1, 4, and 6 in leg 2. We're going to spread in leg 3 with 1, 4, 5, and 9. The lure to me is a real head scratcher. I mean, I've heard that um, more than looks is uh, looking really good right now and if so, he could certainly win this race. I don't have any doubt about it. But I just have a feeling after that long layoff, maybe he doesn't give 100%. So we'll try to beat him uh, with the Chad Brown. Uh, in the leg four, we're going to go two, six, and eight. I think Cogburn is, uh, this is the time you want to get him after such a monster effort. Uh, so we will, uh, we will try to, uh, we'll try to beat him with the eight uh, and the six as well. Uh, with Flavian Pratt aboard, I think is uh, you can't underestimate him. So we'll go two six eight there, and then in the Whitney, uh, I think it's National Treasures race to lose. So in blue, it should be a three in blue, but I do think that Disarm 
uh, offers a really good shot at taking him down if he can uh, if he can rebound. Certainly, if you hear he's wearing a bar shoe again, I just toss him right off the bat. Uh, and then Arthur's ride because if he can rate uh, and run differently than he has, which I think he could do, I think he has the talent, and you never want to underestimate Bill Mott. So we'll throw him in the mix as well. So that's three times three times five times three times three. Uh, that's a hundred and thirty-five dollar ticket on a one dollar base, and at fifty cents, it's sixty-seven fifty. And uh, I think this is a uh, this is a really good pick five, and I do think you have some vulnerable favorites in here. Uh, so, uh, if I had to look for a single, um, I would single National Treasure, uh, probably. Uh, I'm not sure about ways and means. I, I it, something tells me that late running style uh, may may make her vulnerable, especially with bright work in the mix. But still, the best candidate to to win. Uh, I just can't see singling in in that case. So, the, to me, the best single would be National Treasure because the race shape. Everything sets up to the best. This is a very cool sequence. These are great races. There's not a dog in this field uh, of races. So I think it's a make for a really exciting sequence on Saturday. And I hope this helps you with your own analysis. I wish you the best of luck as always. And uh, we'll keep on the lookout for our daily stakes plays and, and for the spa. And uh, we're going to try to get some Delmar in there if we can. Time is always an issue for me. But uh, anyway. Uh, uh, there's plenty to be uh, to be looking forward to from right at the wire, so stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.